everyone. June 18th, 2018. Uh, let's see, where am I here? Let's see. Entertain a motion to adopt to minutes of June 4th. this in previous minutes, but I, I think when we have a resolution, we should, <clears throat> for instance, under the fire department report, the motion was made to adopt resolution, oh, excuse me, it does say appointment of new volunteer. It, it does explain what it was. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Does that mean you withdraw your comment? Or do you have that more? comment. The okay. other comment okay. <laughs> uh, is okay. who was in attendance. Mm -hmm. um, just a minor thing, uh, President Moocher called the meeting to order. Trustees Crockett and Hollister were present, and apparently Moocher wasn't. No, he called the meeting to order. By implication. So he has to be there. So you want me to say that he was also there as well? I mean, I can do that. That's, uh, I, I'm, that's I'm, I'm being picky, but I just, it made sense to say Trustees Crockett, Hollister, and Moocher were present. Okay, further discussion? Hearing none, may we vote, please? Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Mitra? Aye. Aye. Ice. Aye, yes. All right. Uh, now uh, entertain a motion to adopt payment of the bills in this period of $42,080.32. Broken down general fund, 27.41.71. Fire fund, 14.704.41. Cemetery, 4.74.68. EMS billing 88.6110, Broken Bridge 67.12.59, and capital projects 85.85.53. Is there a motion? I will. Uh, we approve payment of bills. I will As second. Presented. Moved and second. Any further discussion regarding that? Okay, that may we vote, please. Mr. Meacher? Yes. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Correspondence for our period. Briefly, we'll go over these. A few emails regarding the uh, 343, um, or excuse me, the Yellow Springs Clifton Connector meeting that was held today. Um, notification from Regional Planning of the Executive <coughs> Committee meeting tomorrow and its agenda. Uh, minutes meeting from the uh, DI, DCIC. Why doesn't that sound familiar? Did, they, did you guys change your name, Mark? The DIC. I thought that was the um, Economic Sustainability Committee. That's, uh, yeah, that's the designated... Uh, uh, designated Community Improvement Corporation yeah. doesn't exist yet. No, it doesn't. Okay, well, perhaps we'll look at that. Um, well, they're having the uh, conversation the discussion about a uh, DCIC. Well, included is the considerations for developing a purpose statement for DCIC, so mm -hmm. I guess it's that's part of it. Designated Community Improvement Corporation. Mm -hmm. uh, there are a couple of emails back and forth between Margaret and McCoy, somebody or another, wanting a bazillion, Luke McCoy, a bazillion Financial records from Miami Township under the uh, oh, more than just financial freedom, huh? freedom of information personal and personal. payroll. A uh, couple of messages back and forth from Susie Butler from the Grinnell Mill about lack of internet access, which has been taken care of. It really wasn't the AT and T's fault. Somebody or the phone system, the actual phone itself, died down there, and somebody decided, well. Maybe if I plug it in here or plug it in there or change this wire or change that wire, it's going to work. Well, it didn't. And uh, got the AT &T. it took a week to get that scheduled. And, but he came down and said, these wires are all plugged in wrong. And Wait, we, where this was at the middle? Uh, 
and lucky me since I set that whole service up, I'm the only one that who they would talk to after going to AT&T retail office in Fairfield Commons and got validated for being who I am and something that could give me a, uh, anyway, that's behind us. Um, another one, oh, this is the thing about the Eagle Scout project, the phone yeah. number, I I that to you. Yeah, I, I called her. Oh, after this, okay. A uh, couple, couple messages about the chicken bill, which we learned of at the last Township Association meeting, and a request for uh, opposition Would to that. that. Come up in a new business? Well, probably. I'll probably bring it up and we'll chew over that chicken a little bit. <laughs> Chicken's here. Might as well <laughs> discuss her. Um, some information requested back and uh, requested and back and forth between Margaret and the county auditor. Uh, a question and answer about this memorial scattering garden and the slowness of the engraving from Dodds. Memorial from Dodds. You know, speaking of which, did you put in the request for um, Ms. Kugets' uh, engraving or not? No, I did not, but I will. Okay. Yeah, and ask them if they're ever going to get around to the last three years' work also. Thank you. Um, a very nice letter from Ann Lisa Piercy and Stephen Pond on uh, Glen Drive. Uh, I will read it briefly. It says, Dear Miami Township Trustees, our thanks to you, to Dan, the rest of the road crew. I don't know who the rest was. <laughs> Brandon, I was at me. <laughs> for dredging the ditch along Glen Road, bringing the dirt to shore up the side, and spreading it out on the road and bank next to our shed. We'll keep an eye on the ditch and hope that it continues to drain through the pipe under the road. Sorry for the delay and thanking you and return to Missouri about a month. So that takes care of that. That was very nice of them to write that letter. Cheers to us. To you and us. Uh, received a letter from the uh, from Emma Robineau, chair of the Odd Fellows Fireworks Committee, asking for our um, hopeful contribution to the fireworks fund this year. Uh, we have traditionally made a contribution every year. Uh, generally in the amount of $500, and I would entertain a motion to make a con contribution, and we can uh, vote on this passage. Anyone care to make that motion or not? I would make that motion. And an amount? Um, well, I think we should, because of the increasing cost of everything, uh, we have traditionally done 500. I would uh, recommend 550, which is not a, a huge. I thought he was going for 750. <laughs> <laughs> I will second the motion to uh, donate $550 towards the community fireworks through the Odd Fellows. All right. Any further discussion regarding those motions? That motion? <coughs> And then we would vote, please. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Meacher? Yes. Mr. Crockett? Yes. It is so ordered. <laughs> I have all of these clipped emails. Yeah. Brings connection. Yeah. Some more emails. Um, an interesting set of correspondence from Patriot Engineering, uh, who sent us a proposal for a uh, very uh, lengthy and uh, inspection services that they for our new firehouse, which almost good to set fire from that firehouse. But um, I sent that to uh, Dan Montgomery and asked him, because I thought we had contracted with somebody, and he confirmed that we'd already contracted with Bowser Mortar to do all those inspections. Uh, and so I sent these guys a little note saying thanks, but no thanks. I'll keep you. Sharing one of the company from Columbus and will tell us what they do. Oh, that's all right. We got them too. <laughs> Um, that's what sells the time share. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Know, it's the county officers meeting uh, in Columbus. I'm going to wait and discuss that in a little more uh, details. It said the meeting was on the 15th. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is what today. day is today? The 18th. So the Friday is the 15th. 
Grassroots, grassroots clipping, you know, have a township association, a, uh, an agenda, and registration packet from uh, the, uh, the uh, convention from the Ohio, Ohio Cemetery Association convention in August. Uh, I may do the usual one day, uh, not the whole thing. Um, last thing, I guess, other than that, we'll talk about that some is the, uh, I, I drafted a letter in op opposition as requested to Representative Brian Hill of the Agriculture and Rural Cultural Committee uh, about uh, the Chicken Bill, House Bill 175. Uh, if either of you two or the chicken have read it, uh, <laughs> I don't think we need a motion, but do you support me including Including attaching this to an email to Representative Hill. Well, I don't know about the chicken, but uh, I would support it. I thought that it was well written. Thank you. <laughs> and I added that to correspondence, but I didn't see that. Uh, you know, that was, you know, I saw that at the very last second, so I just made a note of it right here. I, I support I'm sending that letter, much as I support having chickens on people's property. Okay. More important to me is local control uh, of zoning. They are like my I wrote it that way. And I will, uh, I will forward it to Representative <coughs> Hill. Any other, any other correspondence in or out this period? Hearing none, let's move to the uh, fire report. Oh, yeah. <coughs> there it is right there. Since the last meeting of the board, uh, we've had 44 EMS calls, 13 fire calls. Form 48 fire safety inspections. Oh, yeah, that's it. Oh, that, did you say 44? Is that what you said? 44 oh, EMS? 44 EMS talk? No. And 48 yeah. fire inspections. I think I'm pretty clear. That's pretty clear. Was the inspections, because we inspected. Yeah, yeah, I meant the calls. Yeah, the, it's been busy. The guys in the room are bucks off, so. Cars, uh, personal injuries? Just and, people. Yeah. Illnesses, sorts of breath. So this is roughly a two-week period. This is actually a two-week, yes, a two-week period. Mm. Yeah, that's more indicative of our, our longer periods between meetings. Yeah, that's usually like a three-week, yeah. yeah. But yeah, this is, that was a surprise. I knew we'd been busy, but not that much, so. Mm. But it is what it is. <laughs> we're, we're covering them all right. Our personnel is not getting mm. burned out. Uh, we've got enough people. We're making those. We haven't had to call in. Too much. Uh, I don't believe we had a call on any mutual aid or we were to cancel and burn mm -hmm. coming in. Um, but it definitely is taking a toll on mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so definitely doing that, but it's getting better and the staffing is getting better and they get to resolutions to hopefully help that problem. So, um, so in front of you, you've got your resolutions. All right. 2018 25 is the appointment of. I'm sorry, the hiring of part-time personnel, um, which would be firefighter E.T. Ryan Evans. Ryan is currently a volunteer with a volunteer and the part-time administrative assistant at Seattle Township Fire Department. Um, and he also works as a part-time firefighter E.T. with Washington Township in Montgomery County. Uh, he's been with Seattle for uh, five years. Um, He's been on a lot of calls with us over the years. Um, <laughs> um, just coming with mutual aid or us going there, just like most of you guys know him. Um, he's highly recommended by Chief Miller. And, uh, he's willing to pick up two ships in six days, which is surprisingly exactly what right. Not exactly, just almost mm -hmm. exactly what I need to have coming. So. <laughs> um, just out of curiosity, you know, does this person not have a life or? 
<laughs> Why is he so available to um, everybody, it appears? He's young. Yeah, that helps. Yeah, um, true. And he is uh, working on getting back into college. That's uh, terrible. Uh, finish his degree. Just, just trying to get back into college. He likes, he likes the others, so. He loves it. Yeah. Excellent. Um, tell me resolution number again, I'm sorry. 2018-25. That's resolution 2018-25. Uh, is there a motion to adopt resolution 2018-25? And we have that and just that further down in the packet here. Mm -hmm. I so move. I motion second to move that. and second it in further discussion. Hearing none, may we vote, please. Mr. Meacher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Crawford? Yes. Thank you. Next up for bids, uh, appointment of volunteer personnel. Got a couple more volunteers. 2018-26. Two candidates this this evening. We've got Joshua Sweet and Jeffrey Ben S. Um, Joshua is a fire is just finishing up his firefighter one certification, um, and Jeffrey is an EMT uh, who lives just over the township line uh, in the Bath Township. Um, he's, he's the closest we have to a township resident at this point. <laughs> and Joshua lives. A little farther outside the township, uh, Joshua's in Dayton. But uh, he interviewed really well. The guys who interviewed him, recommended him uh, his references were stellar. Is he going to St. Clair or where is he picking up? St. Clair. Um, yeah, he's at St. Clair. Um, currently works for Dayton Freight. Mm -hmm. But he wants to, what's, what's the apartment? So <laughs> Will train as an EMT? I'm sorry? Will he train as an EMT? Yes, my understanding is that I think he's already enrolled himself. There's program. Oh. So, uh -huh. yeah. My kind of candidate. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Jeffrey uh, is in the Air Force. Um, that right, Pat? Obviously. What's uh, Jeffrey's last name? Ben Ness, B E N E S S. Was on the last name. Um, grew up in the area, so he's very familiar with Yale's family. So, like Yale's family is in the township. And uh, was looking for a place he works uh, for flight medicine at the base. Mm -hmm. Which is um, basically the fancy thing that so picks up injured and uh, flown in from overseas. Um, but he wanted to do more 911 stuff and learn about that. So, um, what kind of availability will he have? Uh, evenings and weekends, actually. He works in you know, short of war break now. Uh, <laughs> he works on uh, a regular weekday job at the base. So, so it's just like, what is the break in the time um, but they all seem like very good candidates. Both uh, Julie interviewed Jeffrey and said he was good. And I, I've spoken to him too. And I, and I was just very sincere and very interested. And he's actually someone that Bob actually kind of recruited somehow. And uh, I said, like many people at Bob, <laughs> recruits who are typically serial killers. <laughs> That's a joke. That is a joke. Our last serial killer is gone from front of front. Even if Lyons probably gets in that every once in a while. So, um, and then we've got, <laughs> I got more, but they're all worth the interview. Bring them in. Um, including someone from Yale's work. So, so between, between her and Jeffrey, we got the demographic covered for the Plain Township metro area. Well, I, I might add that. Uh, your comment about the serial killer should include known, known serial killer. Oh yeah, right. Okay. Who knows what's lurking out right. there? Um, <coughs> that uh, that's another joke. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's it, 2018-26. Mm -hmm. All right, we have resolution 2018-26 before us. Uh, do I hear a motion to adopt such a resolution? Yes. Yeah, I do. <laughs> oh, second. Right. Second. <laughs> I hear a second. Any further discussion regarding that resolution? Hearing none, may we vote please? Mr. Meacher? Yes. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Um, well, Mr. Hollister? Yes. And then, uh, last but not least, Street Fair. You know, Street Fair. No street Fair. Uh, came and went without any major crises. Uh, we had seven calls during the we had 20 people on duty. Could you explain to me 
why the surge in fire inspections at Street Fair time? We are required by law to um, oh vendors inspect all food vendors. I have a lot of food vendors. <laughs> I hadn't thought about that. But it does get easier every year because more and more of the food vendors are flying by the professionals. So I mean, they come in these zombie dogs with this trailer that has a more sophisticated hood suppression system in it than most restaurants have. So that makes our lives a little easier. Um, Karen and Alex's life will get a little harder with the fall one because the new fire code will be in effect. Well, it's in effect now, but we gave her the, the, the pass on this one. That now regulates distances between the food trucks and how much space has to be in all that stuff. So, um, so yeah, they have less brains now. Figure out how they're going to apply because it, you know, you can't pack them all in next to each other. It has to be. The code says 10 feet. The state's allowing three, but there's got to be conditions between. So it's going to take some work to figure out. Risk of revealing that I probably didn't put on street fair this year. Uh, did you have a the normal tent and the whole setup and the our booth? Yeah. Yeah. It didn't look like it. it. Looked like you were sharing with another agency. Well, one of the great losses of not having any Maychak here anymore was her touch of <laughs> making that booth look nice. Um, my understanding, because I was not on booth setup detail, um, there's a new bank manager who wanted more space. So our usual real prominent place, we were told no. Oh. So we had to shift over. So we were right next to the police department that was giving uh, cop symbols. And, uh, there was a big gap, and then the nurses from Green Memorial. Um, so. That's probably who I saw the nurses. So yeah, we have to work out some kind of neon or something. Mm -hmm. okay. The association did make almost a thousand dollars. I think we bought a lot of water sales under uh, their president Houseman. So mm -hmm. his first success in office. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Certainly the. I don't think he sold me water, but <laughs> it was certainly that type of day. Yeah. That was a good day for water sales. Um, yeah, we were, I mean, there was some, almost all of our association officers are also employees of ours. And so when they're on the clock with us, they can't really show for the association since it's five minutes and three and blah, blah, blah. So then we had to scramble. It was tight to find enough people to staff the booth and the ambulance and the fire truck and all yeah. that stuff. But, but we did it. Not everyone was happy about it, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Standing in the sun and 20 people, holy moly. So, okay, and that's it. I think I'm going to let you guys have it at that. Any for the chief? Anything that's what I'm trying to say. Gentlemen, hearing none, I guess we'll move to the new firehouse report. All right, drum roll, please. Okay, here we go. Special meeting with Board of Trustees, Thursday. June 21st, high noon. We will, we will meet and uh, open bids for our new firehouse. Yeah. Uh, we will not be awarding any bids. We will simply be opening them and uh, publicly acknowledging who they're from, what the amount is. And then, for all I know, we'll be handing them over to Ashley Kelly for <laughs> verification or whatever, but we'll find out who all gets them. Uh, and then, keeping our little fingers crossed, but then about three weeks from then, we will be awarding a bid to one of the uh, successful. You can borrow the village's silver shovel. Mm -hmm. Or the chambers, whatever those are. Or Cresco. Right. <laughs> I think Do Karen's got them in her office somewhere. So. Uh, let's not put the cart before the horse, but. Yep. Be good. So. Just Chrome would have Dan's vodka. Uh, he was. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else? Right on the road. It's getting there. Uh, <laughs> I'll know more. Do you have anything about the firehouse? You know? uh, I don't know. I mean, there's been a lot of addendums. Addendum deals. back and forth. And Dan, like Dan asked us about the locksmith. Yeah, he never responded to me. Why do we need a locksmith if everything's carved? 
Keith Carden. I don't know. Car Keith, Keith Carden. What's that? No, um, because that was insanely, insanely expensive. So, oh. like the main entry doors, and then like the door, I think, to the trustee's office, the door to the fire the doors to the fire department, those are all key card, but I'm like, individual offices are just good old fashioned keys. Mm -hmm. I thought they were all going to be key card, but they're like 1800 bucks a pop. Well, I know. I hope so. What's, what, you know, what's, <laughs> there is that. But, um, That's uh, a let's joke. Let's delete that. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I mean, we've used the you know, locking glass or key. Whatever they're called. Yeah, responded to him. I he didn't Eons. say Xenia Lock, but I assume that's who yeah. he's referring to. Yeah. We figured that's what they do. So, they yeah. show <laughs> so it, it's like getting a car without an ignition uh, lock to it. It's yeah. got the hole, but there's no lock and key. So we have to put our own, we have to bring your own locks with us. <laughs> it's a lot process. That might be better. I mean if we're under we can always look at car keying everything. Mm -hmm. Under. Keep thinking positive. Keep, keep thinking that part. Okay. <laughs> Ashley might require it. <laughs> Ashley has been nice and quiet. I'm happy with Ashley. All right, let's move to the cemetery report okay. for the evening. Just the Saturday. last meeting, we had a couple of burial ashes, both in Clifton, mm -hmm. the last two Saturdays. Mm -hmm. so, of course, we have a natural burial tomorrow and a scattering Saturday. I'm not sure all the time. If you want to know how late, I said two o'clock. What's the listing for the National Burial tomorrow morning? Uh, it's just in the scattering area on Saturday. I'm not sure about the phone. I've been there. Have we made any progress on the appearance of the natural of the scattering garden? Well, it's down. It's got a lot of grass coming up now. I'm going to do with it. Pluck it. Throw a little mulch on it? Yeah, no. Waiting on the okay for that. You want to just go get some? Okay for who? You. <laughs> I thought that's why Connor was here last Friday, was to, was to mulch that. Well, no, they worked on your fence and stuff, they didn't, I didn't go get the mulch. But I will, now that you've mentioned it. probably <laughs> <laughs> had that discussion, but yes. Well, I missed, okay. I missed it too. Okay. It's, it's on me. Let's see, I think, I think your man took care of that Saturday. That's good. We needed that too. Yeah, I knocked it down today just because I got something going on tomorrow. Yeah. So, where is that in the? Where is that in the? It's right up, uh, lot thirty-three, right next to Kathleen McMillan on the north. Oh, side. is that right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Thirty-three was his favorite number of the day. So, Dave Eman. Oh no, that's wrong. Never mind. I was just thinking. Dave Eman and I meet a lady Wednesday morning at nine o'clock up there once by a natural burial lot. Local person around town. Just Local, I believe. It's a seven six seven number. Uh, I'm not doing a very good job. I'm trying to keep track of whether we're selling to local people. Or, uh, well, I mean, I can do that. But, you know, yeah. from there was on a twenty mile radius. It seems like twenty twenty mm -hmm. five radius. So. Yeah, the person from Columbus. That was mm -hmm. made me think. Well, I'll take a look and see. I get a lot of calls. I, mean, I, I might get two or three calls a day, and not, nothing for a day or two. And I get a lot of calls about it. Questions. I shut your water off. Is that what was making that puddle? So I shut it off Friday, but it's still got water there. So I checked it again tonight. Yeah. What's the easiest way to address that? If there is an easy way. Find the leak. Mm -hmm. What's the easiest way to find the leak? You just you can't find the pipe because I know where it's coming up. So it's, so it's, 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 it's in the pipe right there at the edge of the road somewhere. That's where it's coming up. I, that would be the place I would look. So the village doesn't have a tool or anything that shows I don't know. water leaks or... I don't know. I'd ask them. How do they find them other than... They're just bubbling up out of the One comes up on the ground. Mm -hmm. Usually indicates it's pretty close to that spot. Well... I mean, it's leaked before and then last year it didn't leak at all. I know. It didn't leak well. Why don't you wait till it dries, turn it back I, on, and I, then... Watch where <laughs> Watch for You got nothing else to do, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> take a chair. Trust job. Yeah, that's a nephew job. <laughs> yeah. That's a good idea. Uh, I shut it off and let it All right. see if it stops. I mean, hopefully it's on that, that line on the outer, not the end line. Mm -hmm. Through that valve pit, I'm not sure. Find out. I got to shut off. We'll see what happens in the day or two. 
That line comes right. from across the street. Does it come off the frost proof? Or they, is it tied into that? The frost proof up by the fence? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it comes out of there down to the southern mm -hmm. pit. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, so I'm wondering which one is it. Because is it? usually it stops when we shut our line down. Mm -hmm. I shut it down Friday and there's still water in there. No, but the, the frost proof is fed from across 68. Right. Okay. And then the water for the other pit, does it come off of that too? Yes. I didn't shut the frost proof off, I shut the one down by mm -hmm. Skidmore. Mm -hmm. Okay, I thought it was fed. So keep leaking on up there and shut that one off and see if it stops. Because that's where that line goes, off, up to the three or four little faucets. That's the one that heads that way. Because one line comes in like this, it's higher than the other line. Is that correct? Where's the water meter? That's the main thing. Hmm. Who's paying for the leak? Oh, we are. I don't know where the meter is. Oh, the meter's at the prosper. Okay. Much well, I shut, I shut it down. We'll see. I check it the other day and make sure it's shut off. I opened yeah. that little valve in there with the hose on it, and mm -hmm. a little bit came out that didn't do it, so I'm assuming the line shut off. Yeah, that's just a back drain. Yeah, it's a lens. Right. You could keep it hopefully from freezing, which apparently didn't work. I uh, saw so I'm have to. I'll find it. Fix it. Yeah. That's right. I think that's it for me. Uh, any other business for our Secretary Sexton this afternoon? Even? There you go. We'll move to Rose. We're going to try to wedge first of next week and get that done. Mm -hmm. okay. That's like two days we should be there, weather permitting. Remind us again what you're wedding. Swimming pool. We get on swimming pool. Mm -hmm. uh, the Clifton for Clifton. That, that, they'll pay for that. Yep. And then uh, Brian Park. That's the curve where mm -hmm. it's really rough. Yep. Yeah. We just cover that up. Mm -hmm. Try to get the steak to grind at because they go up and turn around. And he, I wouldn't, he wouldn't have no part of that. Mm -hmm. I wish they would. But yeah. we're going to fix it. And uh, ditches are done except for Kyle Road because I had a little incident with the tractor. Yeah. That's true. Right. No, that was the tire. Oh, it's just the tire? Well, it was the tractor. I saw it in the shop. It took, a, it took a long, about that big around. But I run over with the front wheel, but you run over small stuff all the time. Well, it rolled up and came up here. Mm -hmm. Line the seat. In between the fifth tank and the seat. Really? Did you see Kyle Road? Yeah. So, broke the fuel line, broke the four of our ship lever, which parts are longer than it'll be here. But it's ready to be put back together. Just mm -hmm. my parts get here. No real damage, but it stopped everything. Oh, well, most things are going. It's a, must have been a tornado left over. Just, it just kind of <laughs> right up under the tractor. Mm -hmm. Usually, right on the middle, we would have this would kind of stood up. Mm -hmm. But it's, it'll be fixed. And no estimates on your apron, I haven't heard anything back yet. No. But I will. We'll get to it. Okay, estimates on what? There's a the concrete apron up here at the cemetery. I guess that was under cemetery business probably. Yeah, it's the one, it's the drive south of the main drive. It's the little, it's the little drive that's next to Skidmore's home. Mm -hmm. It goes back down in. It's the apron. And the, you know, the sidewalk, the piece of sidewalk and the apron into the street is really broken up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's deteriorated. Yeah, you guys have walked out or been there much, but mm -hmm. it, it, it really needs to be replaced, and I think it's a good time to do it. So. They're going to fix our fence. I know we are yeah, talking it's, about so there. It's in, it's in the works. Okay. I, I would expect, I would have thought it would have been done by now, but it should be done any day, oh, as they say. Cool. So. All right. That's the part. That's the part of the fence at the corner of Fairfield Pike at 68. The car mm -hmm. ran into a year or two ago. Mm -hmm. and it took out. Not only took out the fence, but somebody, somebody came right behind and took the fence. <laughs> <laughs> Literally picked it up and took it with them. Right. Yeah, that was like road kill. You know, you're to take <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm sure it went through the scrap yard. Sure. Trooper mm -hmm. shot the fence and then somebody took it. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, it's been it's been an eyesore, I thought, for a couple of years or a little while. So uh, I had the opportunity to, to meet with our um, 
iron workers, it's a big name for guys who make the fence, but who did, who did all the work at the Glen Forest on the fences and the, who put the new fence in and the new, uh, the new entrances. So he's going to make up a couple pieces and clean up his fire. That'd be nice if you guys can look at piece, fence piece. Okay, Rose. So that was rough. Rough. That was rough. That was a lot. Yeah, jump back in. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> okay. I talked to David. Have you talked to him? No. Uh, he's trying to get the original harmonic damper parts. You know, the one where it's all modeled out. All in front. Yeah. That's what's holding this okay. operation up. That was my fix, and it yeah, worked. I know. It worked. It and I told him. I said, you know, if we can't get these parts for a while, we're going to put that thing back together with the space. He could contact. Um, Katie Rose, they put it together. He's, he's, it. he's waiting for Katie Rose to give him a delivery date on oh, okay. stuff. So, but I thought he would have, because he called me like Thursday. He thought he'd know the next day, but it's not that long. But anyway. Okay. Well, we're okay now with that. Right. Right away. Cool. Is that it? Yes, sir. Anything else for no. road personnel? No potholes du jour. I didn't get a chance to go the roads yesterday. There's a couple. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I got open I'll be able to take care of it. I'll be able to take care of it. Fist sir. Well, you know, but you know, I remember back when, you know, we used to have road personnel, I think of Harold Finn and you know, he'd fix everything that broke, and he'd fix all the fire department stuff, and he'd fix all the road equipment that broke, and he'd take care of all that stuff. And, you know, but then, as he got a little bit older, you know, he couldn't really get to that stuff, couldn't get to those repairs and maintenance just as quickly as he did before. And, you know, we didn't mind, we didn't say, Harold, you know, time for you to go out into the sunset because you can't get the job done. So, you know, it's okay. We, you know, We're not talking sunset over. I'm not quite sure where you're going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of worry, yeah. yeah. But so don't worry. You know. I'm getting older. I know. That's <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll take care of you okay. for a little while. And, <laughs> that Brandon is a worker, though. I'm not say. Anyway, uh, fist pops so. Present. And I have a resolution for you all. Bring it forth. It is Resolution 2018-27, Amendment of Permanent Appropriations. And it sounds like all the other ones, with a few different changes in the numbers. Or as it is an ongoing process to accurately appropriate funds according to the needs of the township. Now, therefore, the trustees authorize amendments to the following permanent appropriations. And the gas tax fund uh, increased repairs and maintenance by $2,000. This like those, no? We had a couple of thousand dollars of repairs coming in. And in EMS billing, I increased contracted services by $3,000. I only had $700 in there, and you guys presented a big old. Oh, what happened? It was $2,800. Yeah. $2,880. I thought we had more in there, sorry. No, well, it, was not, it, was, it, wasn't, it, wasn't, hard, it wasn't hard. It wasn't hard to do. So we got more because we spent? No, I only had $700 in oh, okay. the first place. And oh, okay. is this Was that for something new? No. What, what that the, would have been my bad, I guess. I forgot to include that when we we're talking about the budget. Because we've got a bunch well, of it's okay. contracts and stuff. And the good that. news is the the account, the, uh, the fund is able to handle that increase. Yes. So, no worries. Yeah, that's a, that was a light pack. Daniel light pack. Um, Similarly, I haven't looked. We have a surplus in the gas tax fund. I, yeah, we, we do not appropriate. If you look at your appropriate, well, we do not appropriate all of our funds okay. in the gas tax fund. We tr basically try not to appropriate to the penny. And fortunately, very fortunately for this township, we are able to, to we have a little bit of wheel room. We do and, carry and, over. Yeah, we carry over and we get us through the, the beginning of the, the following year. And fortunately, we've been able to do that because we're fiscally responsible. Exactly. So that's resolution, 20, would you say 27 or 28? 28, um, 27. Yeah, 2018-27. 2018-27. Yes, please. Um, 
Is there a motion for adoption? I so move. Mr. Hoffman second. Mr. Crockett second. Any further discussion regarding that resolution? Okay, then we vote. Please. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Meacher? Yes. Thank you. <coughs> um, and uh, there's been more communication with the uh, State Auditor's Office, and I'm expecting the auditors to come in on Thursday morning to get things started. So there you go. We've talked. Mm -hmm. We've agreed. Here they come. <laughs> and they'll be fine. <laughs> Um, but we don't have an estimate. Have no, estimate. there's been no estimate. Um, but it is it is our first year, as um, has been mentioned earlier, to get to be to qualify for just a basic audit, which is less less time basically spent apparently than other audits, and um, then this will be probably the last time, the first and last, when we get to do a basic audit, since we will the next audit will be uh, cover the years with the USDA. So, um, but anyway, I think we're in great shape. We've, we've been through a lot of audits and there's been a lot of help along the way getting things in place. So, hopefully, we we'll, should be fine. I can guarantee you they won't find any stolen funds missing. So, no jail, nothing, we're good. I'm honest, honest mm -hmm. and true. That's it. That's all I have. I, for the few people who are watching mm -hmm. the video, I was startled. Am I right? We actually have to pay the auditor to do the audit, which is a function of that public office, which is also supported by taxes. I think they should be paying for the audit, but we pay for the audit. Yes, and that's the way it is. That's I know. That's I don't know, long as I, I, should, as long as I've been at this I just wanted to make the comment. They, to they the don't public. work. For, they don't work for free. And so yeah. They right. don't do their public job for free. They bill the local governments for the routine audit, which I think is bizarre. But that's the way it is. Mm -hmm. it, it, is like, the way, it is the way it is. It would is. be like a policeman charging you for watching you. <coughs> Not for not a ticket, no penalty, just charging him for even though he's also getting a salary through your taxes. It's bizarre. Noted. Mm -hmm. Anything else from the fist bump, sir? Hearing none, we'll move along to zoning. Well, there's no zoning this evening. Our zoning inspector is out inspecting heaven knows what zoning violations. Well, no, no, because we only have a report first. Right. No, but he's yeah, but in between times he's you know he sniffing out zoning infractions. Right, exactly. And, you know, lots of months here. <laughs> then we'll go to uh, standing committee reports. And he does not fill us when he makes a report. Uh, is on. Nobody used to. Okay. So <laughs> so we uh, let's see, we had an MDRPC meeting last month, uh, had an interesting uh, had uh, among other than the normal things, had an interesting Trail survey and uh, uh, a uh, I can't think of the word recontract recontracted with the executive director for another three years. His performance review was uh, excellent. And we met with RPCC last uh, last month and went through a bunch of different subdivision reviews. Uh, none worth spending much time. Over and uh, just briefly, as we mentioned, I think the last time we will have a new executive director begin uh, next um, next Monday on the job. You will overlap with the existing director uh, for two weeks, and then we kind of uh, what else we got? Uh, did you you went to the last mm -hmm. yes yeah. the See you, right? Mm -hmm. um, and we spent the whole time talking about um, the DCIC concept and uh, didn't really arrive at any recommendations, 
but uh, we're going to go to the village council for further discussion. Uh, to, uh, what they considered. Um, there was also um, um, an author, a person who's written a book on uh, local uh, support for local business. Michael Schumann. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you know who he would be? Because he would be, be here for uh, three days, and I'm trying to read the, uh, the one book. But he's written several. Uh, this one is from 2012. Yeah, he was here in 2009 for a workshop. Use my rudeness in Googling Michael Schumann mm -hmm. Yellow Spring, it might actually come up. There's when he is coming. Okay. Um, but I ask about this. Is the assumption that the township will participate in the designated community improvement corporation? Um, you know. I truly don't know. I think that uh, we undoubtedly will, but um, I truly, we didn't arrive at any conclusions as to what the BCIC would include. I had conversations with Brian Hauch. Mm -hmm. He's been very adamant about including my township. Oh, yeah. So when does this become a formal part of our discussion, other than a report? I would think at some point when when this committee comes to the conclusion that they in fact do want to form a CSC, mm -hmm. and it would be beneficial to the well, the, the conversation is about what sort of powers the DCI would have because um, the presentation by the Fairborn um, city manager um, made us aware and uh, Mr. Sims suggested that we research and look into um, what CIC men and what uh, conclusion that I arrived at was that uh, it can be whatever you want it to be. Well, I'm very interested in our participation. Mm -hmm. I'm concerned that the village council will set the agenda and then we'll just be in position of oh, saying yeah. uh, us village two. council will set the agenda there's no no doubt and why why not us too well i think that uh, we will have um, an input um, but i think that uh, It, it would seem that the focus is more on what happens here in the village in terms of economic investment and that sort of uh, promotion. It uh, seems that the township is um, bordering the village and this is a uh, uh, you're right we don't have a, a commercial zone that is making for for new business at the moment although all agriculture is a commercial zone sure. in a sense yeah 
Um, and the thing is that it's it's something that uh, that we do take into consideration as we pursue uh, various concerns and promotions. Um, but I think that the, the DCIC um, I want to say that the, the ultimate responsibility uh, comes from the village council in terms of uh, financial support and definition. It's, a, it's an interesting uh, conversation to try and nail down and unfortunately we have uh, our meetings at the same time. There's a trustee at the same time as the township. Mm -hmm. As village council. council. Yeah. I guess we could meet them. <laughs> yeah, <it works. laughs> Well, I just repeat, I'm very interested. All I have is questions. Mm -hmm. And uh, hopefully um, I'll be able to provide more after this uh, next meeting. Because um, uh, we left the discussion as that, as uh, purely a discussion, the, uh, uh, I want to say that Saul tries to keep the meeting at, at an hour's length, and this one went on for two hours, and, uh, you know, I don't think uh, we arrived at any conclusion, uh, any recommendation. Regarding that meeting, about uh, anything with the senior center that been working with them at all, other projects? Um, the senior housing um, behind the fire station, that uh, property there, mm -hmm. um, they're having a meeting uh, Thursday morning at the Senior Center uh, regarding that. Uh, Suzanne Patterson has uh, reactivated the committee. Uh, so, again, there's uh, just the beginnings of the discussion. Mm -hmm. It's a good location. <coughs> Great neighbors. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay, anything with Clifton Union? Nope. Yes, uh, did we receive money from them? We are, we are full, full, full of their monies. <laughs> uh, Mill, we went through that trials and tribulations of internet access and pass that one. Uh, new business, we want to have a new business. One piece, uh, one up. We'll let you know that I attended the uh, state county officers, uh, township association officers meeting in Columbus on Friday, and there were a couple pieces of the agenda that I thought were interesting, and one specifically, or two specifically for for our township. Uh, one was the uh, potential passage of House Bill uh, 500 includes a plethora of township um, bills and the um, biggest parts of those would be um, some, some zoning issues, uh, eliminating mandatory requirements that we, and I don't understand why this is in there. 
eliminates the mandatory requirements that attach to submit a proposed resolution uh, to the County Regional Planning Commission for approval, disapproval, or suggestions. I mean, that's the, that's the heart of what that operation, that county operation is there for. Um, it, it doesn't mean you don't have to do it. Uh, you can if you want to, but it eliminates the mandatory requirement. And I think, you know, I think it should be mandatory because that's a professional organization that is there only to review you know, what your township zoning is and where, whether this new zoning code or this new development or whatever fits in with what, what the local uh, jurisdiction you know, wants. And why would they eliminate that requirement? So in effect, it, they're saying you don't have to ask for advice. Yeah. And I, wow, well, that's bizarre. Yeah. Uh, it also permits a township to charge a fee for appealing to the BZA. So, anyone finds that odd? I think everyone should Appeal. have the right to, yeah. it's like you should have, you should have the right to go to court without, court costs are bizarre too, by the way. Well, well we have charged that fee for, for let's see, 19, since 1963. We have that. charged for going to the zoning appeal? Mm -hmm. yeah. Why? All of that. Because there's costs involved. There's, uh, you know, there's there's advertising. Uh, there's notifications. There's setting up meetings and, uh, and board hearings and uh, uh, BZA hearings and all of those sorts of things. But it's never been permitted before. Uh, Struck that from we, we've, we've done it anyway. Though. We've always done. Yeah, you know, almost everybody has. But now they're just codifying it. Um, it permits a board of trustees to temporarily suspend temporarily suspend a member of a zoning commission or board of zoning appeals in those cases where perhaps they're under investigation for uh, some high crimes and misdemeanors. We couldn't do it anyway. Um, we now will no longer uh, elect a president of the board of trustees. We will now elect a chair of the board of trustees of the first of the year. Um, the uh, obligations occurred, uh, we will now be able to authorize our department heads to be able to purchase, make purchases. Previously, or right now, department heads cannot make purchases on their own without board authorization for uh, amounts of over $2,500, um, which is one time all the time. But, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But now that that limit would be raised to ten thousand dollars within the budget, of course. Was a joke. Within the budget, of course. And we would now authorize, uh, be authorized to raise uh, 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 money or spend money to appropriate money for a monument for the armed members of the force, the members of the armed forces, from five thousand to uh, fifty thousand dollars, and repeal section of revised code regarding the vacations of lots within a municipal corporation. That's a strange thing, but and then some oil and gas things. Currently, we're not allowed to pay for monuments. Currently, we can only pay five thousand dollars, up to five thousand dollars for a monument. Now we can do, or if this bill passes, or when this bill passes, that that would be raised to fifty thousand. We can't spend our money on anything we want. No. I'm learning. Our council is the redheaded stepchild of allowing. Yep, we are only allowed to do what's authorized by the state. Mm -hmm. And so these are. It seems know, like a, a lot of different areas yeah. that they're touching and lumping yes. it all into one That's bill. That's why they call it an way. omnibus bill. It's got a little bit of everything in it. Yeah. Um, the, the last thing that was interesting is the uh, we there was a presentation from the Bureau of Workman's Compensation on a program that they're starting, uh, which they're they're trying to get a better feel for all employees in the state of Ohio of their this is a big project of all, of their general health and um, the general overall health, not only physical, but mental health. And they, they're trying to get every employee, now there are certain categories, but it's a fairly broad se uh, selection. Uh, includes public, that's why I bring it up, because it includes public employees uh, similar to us. It's operations less than 50 employees and you know, smaller things. But they're asking us, employees, employers, to to advocate them for the employees to go, uh, basically it's an online thing where you go and you, you, you 
answer a bunch of questions about your health. It's all 100% confidential. BWC does not, there's no, you know, the, the, your names and who you work for and any of those things and, and your answers. This is a separate, Separate business that does this, so it's not. Uh, I can't say it right now, but they don't distribute to to back to us. Like we could not find out about any of our employees about what they answered on the questionnaire, um, nor the beer walk workman's compensation can. And um, in compensation for the employers, the employees doing that, uh, they would receive a seventy-five dollar gift card. Um, either MasterCard, Visa gift cards, or there's specific companies that you can give gift cards to from also. So by taking the survey, and there's one additional little, you, you have to give a blood sample. Uh, you can either go somewhere and give it, or you can, I don't know how they can send you a little test kit. You know, a pinprick who can't give you the kind of, as one lady of Thermos, Theranome Nose Corporation found out, one little drop isn't going to give you a whole lot of information. But anyway, there's that possibility uh, of doing it, and so then you can give your card. If in fact that you had some uh, some conditions, uh, maybe say smoking, for example, <laughs> if you, uh, and then you you would you would have, I think two, I believe it's two, uh, telephone interviews with this company about. Resolving those issues. If you do that, you get an, an additional fifty dollar uh, gift card. So you make some money on this. So, um, so is this a program that's pending? No, it is in place. No, it is in place right now. Wow, that's um, already started. And this is by the so BWC is the one that's showing on the seventy five bucks a survey. Yep. Mm -hmm. I see and how much money they have. They, how do I get on? They've this? committed six million dollars to to get it off the ground. Uh, I'll give you the website. I've already gone to it and registered, and I'm waiting for it. Just to, I was hoping that I could get it, so I would know whether you know we qualified and whether it just seemed like it was a lot of work or something. But I don't. I, you've got to wait two or three days in order for them to process it. So anyway, uh, but you can do it. But how how do you have a, a size control if it? all goes into one pool. I don't, I'm sorry, I don't understand. What you I, was, I was thinking on. that uh, you said that uh, you had to be 15 uh, employees. 50. Or 50, okay. Yeah. 50 or under. Well, you do give all this personal information mm -hmm. to this third-party company mm -hmm. about where you work, what you do, how old you are, whether you're male, female, I, mean, I don't know what all, no, plus a, a zillion questions, I don't know if it's a zillion, but a lot of questions on the following questionnaire. Mm -hmm. So they will keep all that and they will make all those, all those determinations. But that is, that is absolutely confidential. Mm -hmm. That information is not given to the Bureau of Work with Compensation other than statistically, you know, we have 50,000 employees and 20% of them smoke and 30% of them drink and 40% mm -hmm. of them use drugs and you know the other 50 percent are psychologically impaired you know, all of those sorts of things that they're looking for uh, i assume these are hypothetical numbers you're giving uh, yeah the, yeah the study's not done yet might be higher <laughs> uh, but the, the the problem for bureau of workman's compensation is whoever Authorize this. They authorized a, a million dollars this year to get the program set up, and a million dollars next year to continue with the program, if they can sign up 25,000 employees in the first year to get into this, get into this investing, investing to the for a period. And so far, this is July, almost July, and they have 1,500 signed up. So they got a ways to go. So that's well, why this only fifteen hundred went to seventy five dollars. Yeah. So that's why well that know about it. So that's why they're out beating the bush at every local chicken dinner and, and county officers meeting. Well, how did we get involved? How did we? How did I? How do I? Uh, the website. 
Yeah, I was going to say. I well, I've got a website. Just, a, just as an aside, I multiply seventy-five dollars times twenty-five thousand, and I come up with nearly two million, not one million. So they not going to have the money. So you go to goactivehealth.com. Better you, better Ohio. And I have a piece of paper here for you. If you if anybody wants it. Say it again. Go active health. Go dot com slash. Better you, better Ohio. You can put that on my desk. Right? Yes, ma'am. Anybody interested? Mm -hmm. yeah. Totally fine. Hmm? Totally fine. Yeah. How do they set up your blood to be drawn? Do they have a doctor who knows what you're doing? No, you go to the, 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 the contract with the Quest. Well, it's Quest, which is over at uh, Wright State. Quest Diagnostics. It's the same thing as Copy Net, but it. Do you want to have to have the paperwork? To, I don't think so. I think. I think they will have the information there after you've done your, you know, it's, it's set it up that way. Mm -hmm. So, any other old business this evening? Um, just that, um, well, this is at, uh, at the, uh, the, the DIC, DCI, C discussion. Um, one of the serious topics was information gathering, and mm -hmm. uh, I think that, uh, that reviving the, uh, the village form is a good format for information gathering. Um, what is the village form? I'm, I'm, I'm well. The village forms used to be um, organized. I want to say that Saul Young was the uh, all the meetings were held at his house, and two of them were at Wright State, and one was at Antioch. They were they were, as I remember, three different events. Um, but what I'm remembering is that there were over 70 active groups that were invited to the forums. And then you had breakout groups. Sounds like the village visioning. Mm -hmm. um, except that it was a one-day event and it had to have um, real conclusions and inputs, um, and I thought that that was an excellent uh, information gathering uh, medium in terms of... Um, and that's being re reorganized, reconstituted, you say? Well, no, I, I think that uh, it should be. Oh, it should be. I hope if, you, if you do it, I'll attempt. Okay. Speaking of old business, anything update from your projects? Yes. Right. Uh, I think that the broad, rural broadband, uh, I have, I may have the wrong name, Mr. Bartley, does that sound right? Mm -hmm. uh, I've spoken with and I've spoken with a couple people from Rebecca. I have not gotten anyone from Verizon. Uh, to call back or answer satisfactorily. Uh, I think this will be a growing, a pending issue for years. Mm -hmm. uh, there is state money. I don't understand the priorities for what kinds of rural areas they would underwrite the extensions of fiber optic or cable uh, beyond what uh, existing commercial market would support, mm -hmm. uh, but there's going to be a demand, and uh, I'm interested in pecking away at it. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, and, uh, on the Eagle Scout projects, uh, have you had any talk with Mrs. Skidmore? No, I just passed it. Because she had proposed, she had suggested specifically 
cemetery related research. Mm -hmm. If you had some ideas to give me, I would then be better equipped when we actually talk. About. Well, I think I mentioned about the only thing that's left on is the uh, is the continuation of photographing tombstones and putting them on the uh, putting them on the website or the, not the website but the uh, the software. <laughs> By photographing, uh, do you mean the epitaph or an actual physical photograph? An actual photograph mm -hmm. of a of a tombstone that can be put on the uh, put on the in the software. But assumedly, they would be clear enough that you would be able to read the epitaph. If or you do it, if you do it right, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Gene Payne did hundreds of them for us a couple of years ago and she did a excellent job on every single one because as I think I mentioned we did have an Eagle Scout that, that wanted to do some photographing and putting it on them and his photography was left something to be desired. Yeah. Well, uh, just for the record I have no memory of your saying all this. Okay. Very possibly you said all of it. Okay. And anything in the zone code work? I don't have it on the website yet. Okay. Well, no. Okay. It's in my pocket. Mm -hmm. well, <laughs> we, we can talk afterwards. I know it's. Well, we can talk now. I mean, is it incorporated in the <coughs> zone code? Is the new. I haven't figured out how to do it. Okay. So I understand it's not on the website because the, cause the new piece is cool. No problem. We'll get it. Don't go anywhere. Anything else for the board? I entertain a motion for adjournment. Aye. Oh, here, 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 I'll make a motion. I so move.